One of the most common questions we get is what's the difference between an eye bolt and a hoist ring and how should they be used? By the end of this video, you'll be confident in what you need the next time you're rigging. So let's get into it. Welcome back to the Lifting and Rigging channel. My name is Kay, and today we're going to explain the difference between an eye bolt and a hoist ring, describe their pros and cons, and clarify the common uses for each. Used as a lifting or securement point during a lift, eye bolts and hoist rings are sometimes the most common types of rigging hardware. Although eye bolts and hoist rings are used for similar applications, they differ greatly when it comes to design capabilities and features. It's not uncommon to see an eye bolt bent or cracked during a lift when a hoist ring could have been used to better accommodate the rigging and support the load. So what is an eye bolt? Used as a lifting or securement point, eye bolts are one of the most popular types of rigging hardware. Just like slings, sling hooks, and shackles, Eye bolts come in a number of designs and different configurations. Eye bolts can be used as a connection point for rigging, anchoring, pulling, or hoisting applications. Eye bolts are stationary lifting points, and only certain types can accommodate angular lifts by factoring in a significant reduction to the working load limit, or WLL. The rated load of an eye bolt ranges anywhere from 200 pounds to 65,000 pounds. Depending on the size and shape of the load, lifts may be performed with the assistance of one or multiple eye bolts placed throughout the surface of the load. Common use of eye bolts. Eye bolts can be used as a connection point for rigging, anchoring, pulling, or hoisting applications. In many cases, the eye bolt is a permanent engineered lifting point on a motor, container, or other industrial object. Eye bolts are best applied to lifting these items with a straight inline pull. Different types of eye bolts. One of the most important considerations when using an eye bolt is whether you need a shoulder or non-shouldered eye bolt. A shouldered eye bolt is designed with the shoulder at the point where the eye and the shank come together. This shoulder design reduces bending stresses on the shank and allows the eye bolt to be used for angular lifting if the shoulder is properly seated in the load. If you're lifting with slings at any angle, you must use a shouldered eye bolt. Non-shouldered eye bolts are designed without a shoulder and can only be used for true vertical or inline lifts. Eye bolts pros and cons. Eye bolts are less expensive in comparison to hoist rings and are often purchased in bulk amounts. However, it's not uncommon for eye bolts to be used, abused, and disposed of as they are inexpensive and non-repairable. And because eye bolts are simple products lacking moving parts, they are relatively easy to learn how to use and to visually inspect. Angular lifts on an eye bolt will significantly lower the working load limit and should be avoided whenever possible. If an angular lift is required, a properly seated shoulder eye bolt must be used. It's important to note that not all shoulder eye bolts are rated for angular lifting. Be sure to consult with a manufacturer before using an angular lift. What is a hoist ring? A hoist ring, sometimes referred to as a swivel eye bolt, is a piece of rigging hardware that screws into an engineered lifting point on a load. The function of a hoist ring is similar to an eye bolt. However, a swivel hoist has the capability of pivoting and or swiveling to accommodate lifting and angles without incurring damage to the device. Whereas eye bolts are stationary and can only accommodate angular lifts by factoring in a significant reduction to the WLL. Because hoist rings have more moving parts, they do come in at a higher cost than eye bolts. However, they tend to last longer and are usually repairable if damaged. Learning to use and inspect these devices is more complicated. Hoist rings also require the use of an additional tool, a torque wrench, to ensure they're properly torqued into the load. Parts of a hoist ring. The bale, the shoulder pin, the screw bolt, the bushing, 
the body, and the washer. The rated load of a hoist ring ranges from anywhere between 800 pounds to 250,000 pounds. Depending on the size and shape of the load, lifts may be performed with assistance of one or multiple hoist rings placed throughout the surface of the load. Swivel hoist rings can pivot at 180 degrees and or swivel at 360 degrees from the screw's axis to accommodate load movement while maintaining the working load limit. Like eye bolts, hoist rings can be used as a connection point for rigging, anchoring, pulling, or hoisting applications. They are often used to lift items like plates of steel, motors, dies, and containers. While hoist rings are often used to lift the same type of objects as eye bolts, they are best applied to situations where angular lift is necessary. Hoist rings are also necessary to use in a lift when an item is going to be flipped, turned, or manipulated in any other way than straight inline lift. Different types of hoist rings. The most common types of hoist rings are swivel hoist rings, side pull, and side load. A swivel hoist ring, also known as a center pull hoist ring, is the most common type of hoist ring to come across on a job site. The bale, usually a U-bar, is connected through the center of the body with a pin in a clevis-like configuration. They cannot be used for side mounting, as the load could obstruct the bale's range of movement. Side pull and side load hoist rings are designed for side mounting only. The bale on these hoist rings is attached adjacent to the screw, rather than attaching directly above the screw. These hoist rings will pivot and swivel to self-align with the load, but unlike swivel hoist rings, they do not maintain the full working load limit as the bale pivots. If you're looking for more information on eye bolts and hoist rings, check out the blog articles by clicking the links in the description of this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment if you have any questions or just wanna say hi. Once again, my name is Kay and I'll see you later.